hello students and dear viewers welcome back to the second session of your enzymes topic so as i mentioned in the last session today we'll be learning about the classification of enzymes so before going to this classification we'll see some other terms which are used in this topic so i would like to show some of the components of your enzyme structure or the structure of enzymes so here we have the components of your enzymes so we all know all the enzymes are protein in nature except your ribozyme like your proteins we have simple proteins and the complex or holo enzymes so holo enzymes are nothing but which is having a one part which is a protein part and the other part is a non protein part so the non protein part is named as cofactor and the protein part is named as apo enzyme okay so again this cofactor or non protein part are of two types one is the inorganic molecules usually the metal ions are the inorganic molecules and the large organic molecules are of two types of your cofactors or the non protein parts okay so this uh, large organic molecules are usually named as coenzymes and i have another term called as prosthetic group the prosthetic group is any compound or any coenzyme or cofactor which is covalently bound to your enzyme protein is called as prosthetic group okay so it cannot be separated from your enzyme without breaking down of the protein so when you remove that the protein becomes or the enzyme becomes inactive and the metal ions are the one usually tightly bound to your protein or the apo enzyme okay so i have apo enzyme cofactor and prosthetic group are the different terms which are used in this topic so here you can see the apo enzyme which is a protein part which is in grayish color and the cofactor here and one of the coenzyme and here it is a catalytic site or your active site so when the apo enzyme is combined with its cofactor or coenzyme then it will be active that is named as holo enzyme okay so coming to the cofactor and coenzyme the non protein part of an enzyme which is essential for your enzymatic activity or catalytic activity of your enzyme is named as cofactor and there are most of the enzymes which require cofactors for their catalytic activity so these cofactors as i said we have two types one is your organic molecules the other one is sorry the yeah inorganic molecules so the inorma, inorganic molecules are usually your metal ions and the organics are named as coenzymes we'll see with the examples so the cofactors are your metal ions the metal requiring enzymes will be again of two different types one is named as metallo enzymes the other type is metal activated enzymes the metallo enzymes means here the metal ion will be tightly bound to its protein part or its enzyme protein and it cannot be separated easily without breaking down of your enzyme protein okay example i have is cytochrome oxidase where the iron and copper will be tightly bound to its protein or the enzyme protein and in catalase and oxidase you see ferric i mean ferrous ion that is your iron okay that is about the metalloenzymes 
another example where the zinc is tightly bound to the carbonic anhydrase so these are the enzymes where the metal ions are tightly bound to their protein or enzyme protein okay. next i have metal activated enzymes these metal activated enzymes where the metals are loosely bound to its protein or enzyme protein and you can easily separate that metal ion from your enzyme protein example i have hexokinase and amylase so here these ions enhance the biological activity or the enzymatic activity of your enzymes so this is the difference between metallo enzymes and metal activated enzymes metallo enzymes where the uh, the metal ions are tightly bound in, in the protein part of your enzyme whereas metal activated enzymes they are loosely bound and you can easily separate them okay. so next is your sorry the coenzyme or the non protein organic molecules okay so these coenzymes again required for the optimum activity of your enzyme and most of them the most of the coenzymes or derivatives of your water soluble vitamins that is your group of b complex vitamins so examples i have vitamin b1 that is the thiamine the coenzyme form of thiamine is tpp thiamine pyrophosphate and vitamin b2 that is your riboflavin the coenzyme forms are fad fmn okay and vitamin b3 that's your niacin so the coenzyme forms of niacin are nad and nadp nadph and vitamin b6 the pyridoxin the plp is a coenzyme form pyridoxal phosphate so these are the different coenzyme forms of your different vitamins that is vitamin b complex the enzymes uh, sorry the coenzymes again are broadly classified into two main groups based on which type of reaction based on the reaction they are involved or the type of reaction they are involved okay so we have two groups the first group group 1 those coenzymes which are involved in oxidation reduction reactions where they transfer hydrogen ions or electrons in oxidation reduction reactions example i have nad fad fmn nadp okay so l lactate dehydrogenase is an enzyme which is dependent on or which require nad so this catalyzes the oxidation reduction reaction of pyruvate to lactate and lactate to pyruvate okay so this oxidation and reduction reactions are coupled reactions so they require these group 1 uh, coenzymes and coming to the group 2 those involved in transfer of group other than the hydrogen ions here they are not transferring any electrons or uh, hydrogen ions they transfer other than the hydrogen ions or electrons like your amino group or acetyl group methyl group etc so here i have the plp that is pyridoxine phosphate pyridoxal phosphate which is a uh, vitamin b6 coenzyme form that usually required for transfer of your amino group and the coenzyme a is the vitamin b5 coenzyme form which is required for acetyl group so this is about the coenzymes okay and coming to apoenzyme and holoenzyme we already discussed in the previous slides um, the apoenzyme is a protein part of an enzyme without the coenzyme is your apoenzyme whereas holoenzyme is nothing but the apoenzyme with its coenzyme it will become active that is named as holoenzyme example i have here cytochrome oxidase okay which has its prosthetic group heme when it is covalently bound then it will be active and it is named as holoenzyme so the heme when it is bound with its enzyme protein that is your apoenzyme then it becomes holoenzyme 
okay so this is about the apoenzyme and holoenzyme cofactors and coenzymes apoenzyme and holoenzyme here you can see this is an apoenzyme and the cofactor is binding here and then it will become the holoenzyme which is active as i mentioned prosthetic group any coenzyme or a cofactor when bound covalently to enzyme protein that is your prosthetic group and it cannot be separated without breaking your breaking down of your protein okay so coming to the nomenclature of a uh, nomenclature of enzymes and classification of enzymes so in earlier days enzymes were named by adding the suffix ase at the end of the substrate name okay so here i have an example urease which acts on the urea okay so that's why it is named as urease it's named as urease sorry urease and some enzymes were named by their discoverers for example the pepsin uh, cytochrome uh, sorry trypsin chymotrypsin so these are the names the enzyme names which are named by their discoverers and these names are called as tribal names of enzymes okay so now we have something called iubmb system the international union of biochemistry and molecular biology that is iubmb in 1964 have nomenclated the enzymes by the system that is iubmb system which was subsequently modified in 1972 and 1978 so let us see how they are so here the each enzyme is characterized by a code number that is by your iubmb system i am talking about code number called enzyme commission number or ec number consisting of four digits four digits for example 2 7 1 so these are the four digits the first digit usually indicates the main class which class the enzyme belongs to that characterizes the type of reaction it catalyzes for example oxidation reduction or transferring or hydrolyzing that's how okay second digit here if you take seven it indicates the subclass indicates the type of group involved in the reaction which type of group it is transferring or something okay and the third digit indicates the sub sub class this denotes the substrate on which enzyme going to act which type of substrate or what what the substrate it is going to act on and the fourth digit usually specifies individual enzyme the serial number of the enzyme in that list indicates the systemic serial number and the name of the enzyme so this is how we are going to name the enzymes by iubmb system okay example i have here hexokinase has an iubmb number 2711 so the first digit 2 which indicating it belongs to second class that is the second class of your iubmb system enzyme is transferases and the second digit 7 it is a it belongs to seventh subclass usually it is a phosphate transferase okay and the third one the number one first sub subclass in which the acceptor of phosphate group is an alcoholic group okay on which type of substrate it is going to act and fourth digit in the first enzyme is it is a seventh i mean the fourth digit is 1 so it is the first enzyme in seventh subclass okay so that is how the enzymes are 
named by this IUPMB system. So its systemic name is now ATP hexose phosphotransferase and the reaction it catalyzes conversion of glucose into glucose 6-phosphate and the ATP is the one which is giving the phosphate here so ATP is converted to ATP so this is the reaction catalyzed by hexokinase so this is how we are going to name the enzymes so coming to the enzyme classification now so enzymes according to this IUBMB system we have classified them into six functional classes the and they are based on the type of reactions that they catalyze first one is oxidoreductases second transferases hydrolysis lysis isomerases and the sixth class is ligases so the acronym for this enzyme class is o t h l i l othlil so you can easily remember all the enzyme classes by this acronym so coming to the each class now so first one is your oxidoreductases so this kind of enzymes usually catalyze oxidation reduction reactions they are referred as dehydrogenases oxidases peroxidases oxygenases or reductases so these are the enzymes which belongs to oxidoreductases or they are named as these uh, different names or different enzymes okay so examples i have alcohol dehydrogenase succinate dehydrogenase lactate dehydrogenase here you can see the type of reaction the lactate dehydrogenase is catalyzing so lactate is converted to pyruvate and NAD is acting as a coenzyme here so NAD is getting reduced to NADH plus H plus ion okay so lactate is converted to pyruvate which is getting oxidized the lactate which was in reduced form getting converted to oxidized form here you can see the AH which is reduced okay converted to A to the oxidized form and B which was in oxid oxidized form converted to reduced form so this is how the oxidation and reduction reactions are the coupled reaction so if one compound is getting oxidized the other one the coenzyme may be getting converted to reduced so this is how the oxidation reduction reactions are always coupled reactions and they require NAD or your FAD as a coenzymes usually so here this is the best example of your oxidoreductase enzyme reaction that is the lactate dehydrogenase enzyme reaction so coming to the second class the transferases so the enzyme of this class usually transfers various groups other than your hydrogen ions okay so here i have an enzyme examples methyl transferase which usually transfers the methyl group from one from the donor to the acceptor and hexokinase phosphate group and alanine transaminase which usually requires for amino group transfer or transfer of amino group so here i have the example of reaction here the alanine is the donor now which is donating its amino group to alpha ketoglutarate once this alpha ketoglutarate accepts the amino group that will be converted to glutamate and the carbon skeleton of alanine will become pyruvate now so this is how the amino group is donated from alanine to the acceptor alpha ketoglutarate which is converted to glutamate the enzyme is alanine transaminase or alanine aminotransferase 
so these are the transferases which usually transfers one or the other compound so methyl transferase usually involved in the transfer of methyl groups from the donor to the acceptor okay so next is hydrolysis hydro means that is hydration or water right this enzyme class usually hydrolyze the substrates by adding a water means they will break the compound one compound into two okay with adding a water or they will break the linkage between a compound with adding a water molecule for example i have lipase amylase pepsin and your pyrophosphatase so here they will add the water molecule and break one compound here pyrophosphate is broken down into two individual phosphates so that is by adding a water so this is about the hydrolysis hydrolysis are the one which will hydrolyze the compound into two or more by adding a water by using a water molecule okay so coming to the lysis the lysis are the class of enzymes which catalyze the removal of groups from the substrate here again it is also breaks down the compound but here without addition of water and leaving behind double bonds in the compound examples i have aldolase fumarase arginosuccinate lyase and pyruvate decarboxylase here you can see the pyruvate is converted to acetaldehyde and carbon dioxide so it is cleaved into the pyruvate is cleaved into acetaldehyde and carbon dioxide so the pyruvate decarboxylase is an enzyme here you can see the double bonds So that is about the lysis and coming to the isomerases. The isomerases are the class of enzymes which catalyze the interconversion of the isomers. They just change the uh, maybe the functional groups for example aldose to ketos or shifting of the uh, a phosphate group from the third uh, carbon to second car carbon that is how they just interconvert the isomers examples i have racemases which is a methyl melonyl coa racemase all doses and ketoses i mean convert interconversion of all dose to ketose that is triose phosphate isomerase and cis trans isomer that is your retinol isomerases it is just a interconversion of isomers for example glucose is glucose 6 phosphate is converted to fructose 6 phosphate in your glycolysis so that is the phosphohexose isomerase so that is how they interconvert the isomers so coming to the ligases ligation means it's joining so the this class of enzymes usually catalyze the bond formation by linking two compounds are ligating the compound which where they use energy in the form of ATP so examples I have acyl CoA synthetase acetyl CoA carboxylase glutamine synthetase okay so here you can see I have glutamine synthetase glutamate is converted to glutamine by using ATP for the energy purpose so here the amino group is added so the glutamate is converted to glutamine now so this is about the ligases so by this i am ending the session so i hope it will be helpful for you in the next session we'll see the factors affecting enzyme activity and the enzyme kinetic sorry enzyme kinetics and factors affecting enzyme action or enzyme activity